What is up guys, Sean here. Thanks for joining me on another video. If you guys follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, you know that I've been um, tweeting and Facebooking and Instagramming this picture, telling you guys that I'm gonna show you how I came to do this. So as you can see what the before and after looks like with this image. We're gonna take this image from this here to this. Now, it's not that complicated. There are a few steps. I would like to say that this video is gonna be, you know, real quick, but Lightroom and Photoshop tutorial videos, they're never really that quick. But I'm gonna try and, and just kinda nail all the points really fast so you guys can understand what it takes to arrive to an image just like the one you see here. The image on the left is not too bad. Slightly a little underexposed, um, but doesn't matter. So what happens when you shoot in RAW, you can get what you see on the right. Um, I'm gonna take you through my workflow and what I do to prepare my images. So what we're going to do is jump straight into this. I'm going to reset this image by hitting this button here on the bottom right hand side, which says reset. And it takes us right back to a, a clean slate. Now, one thing to take note of when you open up any image in Lightroom, especially uh, a, a raw photo, is right here, uh, by default, it's always gonna be medium contrast. Now, this is what it looks like. For me, it's too strong. I like my images to be as flat as possible, so I leave it on linear. And as you can see, it's uh, pretty much almost the same. Uh, actually, just a little less on, on the right. Uh, so let's go ahead from top to bottom, I'm going to take you through all the settings to arrive at what you saw earlier in this video or what I posted online. Now, I normally don't start just top to bottom. I jump back and forth between the different uh, sliders and filters and things that are on here. But for the sake of uh, demonstration, I'm gonna make it easier for you guys so you, can stand, so you can see how each one of these sliders affects the entire image. All right, so let's go ahead and start here at the top. I'm going to go ahead and uh, set my white balance here to about 5,100. Okay, so that way we don't make it too orangey, so uh, we just dial it down a little bit. I, that looks good for me. There really is no right or wrong of what white balance you arrive to. It just really depends on what you want to do. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the exposure just a hair to about 0.25. And the reason I'm going up that high, not too high, because I don't want to blow out these uh, the highlights here too much. It's cool to have it, you know, a little blown out. It's, uh, it's all right, no big deal, but I don't want to go overboard with it. So I'm just going to limit that, but it did uh, bring a little bit of illuminance here to the front. Uh, if we go ahead and take a look at the before and after, again, we're already starting to see a pretty good difference between our original image and what it looks like now. Now, moving on to the next part, what I want to do is balance out the shadows uh, and even them out with the highlights on her face. So as you can see, this part of her face is lighter than around here, you know, and even down in here. So we're going to bump up those shadows just a little bit. Let's say right around uh, probably about 42. Yeah, 42 is good. As you can see, we're lightening up her face already just by making these few adjustments. Uh, next part we're gonna do is bring up our white, which is right here. I am using Lightroom 4, uh, people. Uh, if you have Lightroom 3, it's probably gonna be your fill light that this is what it's equivalent to. But we're gonna bring this up to about uh, 39. Okay, so not, not too much. Uh, let me dial that in, 39. All right, uh, let's go ahead and look at the before and after. We're already starting to see massive differences here just with these little tweaks that we've been doing. Uh, but we're gonna even make some bigger adjustments to this. Now, the next part we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the vibrance. So we're just gonna dial it back just a hair, not, not too much, you know, just so it's not too strong. So let's just say around eight. I think we'd, we should be okay with that. Next part here is under your tone curve, off to the right here. Uh, we're gonna adjust some of the highlights and darks and shadows. Uh, again, bringing an even, uh, evening out the lighting. That's what I meant to say. I'm just, we're, we're gonna, we're, our goal here is, is to even the lighting on their face across your skin. So we're gonna bump up the lights here to about eight. Not too much, just a hair, just to illuminate the, uh, the, the lighter areas here a little bit more. 
and then we're going to bring up the darks as well we're going to bring up the darks to about 39 and we're about almost there i know i should just dial it in but sorry i'm getting a little lazy we're now we're brightening up the images we don't portraits are meant to be light nice light and bright especially these kind their headshots this is my good friend Alyssa. she's a wonderful person she's an actress and we did these headshots for her um and this is one of uh, my favorite ones that we took so again the images are meant to be nice and bright and this, especially in this particular case so again we're going to do the same thing with shadows we're going to bring up the shadows a little bit to about 21. there we go starting to look good now we are losing uh contrast and depth to the image but we'll work on that in a little bit but right now we're just dealing with um with, with brightening up the image evening out the the lighting across her skin okay um, then let's go down here to our HSL, which is our hue, saturation, and luminance. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, just affect the orange because this is more or less the color that you'll find in, in uh, people in, in, on the skin tones between the orange and yellow. So let's go ahead and just bump this up a little bit. We're not going to bump this up too much at all. Uh, we're probably going to go right around maybe so as you can see, we're at nine. Let's drop it back down. See, we just brought up a little bit of brightness to our face. Not, not, not too much, just a little bit. Starting to look good. So let's go ahead and look at the difference real quick. Massive difference, folks, just, just with that. All right, so the next part, what we want to do is what we, we want to smooth out the face. This is probably going to be your favorite part. All right, let's go ahead and smooth out this, uh, this skin. So at the top right here, we're going to select this brush right here, brush tool and it's gonna give us a menu. What we wanna do is go down to clarity, all right? But we don't wanna keep it up, we wanna slide it all the way down. Now, it's all right if you wanna set it at 100%, actually I do it all the time, because from this point, I can dial it back. So instead of me, you know, setting my flow here and my density to whatever, 50 or less, how I've seen the, some other people do it, it's fine, it's no big deal. It's no wrong or right. If you wanna do it that way, it's up to you. I just find it easier just to leave everything at 100% uh, here and there. That way, what I can do after is I can dial it back. So instead of having to add another layer of softness, uh, I can just leave it where it's at and dial the strength back. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom in here a little bit. And actually, let's get pretty close. All right, so let's go ahead and just start painting in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward. Okay, so fast forwarding here, this is what our final uh, image looks like with uh, with the clarity tool. Now, we're not done yet, but uh, let's go ahead and see the difference. Let's go ahead and uh, turn this off here and turn it back on so we can see the before and the after. So it's up to you if you want to leave it this strong, but I'm just going to go ahead and dial it back a little bit because we're going to smooth out our face in another way uh, right now, which I'm going to show you. So I'm going to drop it down to about 72%, right around there, 70%. I think 70% will be good. Uh, oops, I meant minus. There you go. That's what you don't want to do. So minus 70%. So let's go ahead and turn that off and turn it back on. Okay, so it looks good. It's not too strong, but we still want to brighten up this image on her face a little bit more. And don't forget, we don't want to change too much of these other universal uh, tools, such as your highlight exposure, because we'll start really blowing this out, and that's not what we want. It's okay to have it a little bit blown out, but we want to just affect this area here and bring this out a little bit more. So what we're going to do is we are going to come right back up here, create a new tool, and we're going to create uh, sorry, we're going to add, sorry, an exposure. We're going to change the exposure here. Now, this is where you want to change the flow and density. We're going to bring it down to about 50 on both of them. 51, 51. That's, that's good enough right there. And what we're going to do is we are going to paint all in her, in her face. We're going to bring this down to about yeah, 82, 82, 80. Let's just make it even. 0.80. Okay, so what we're going to do once we've done that, I'm going to come here and we're going to brush in her face. You see, we're starting to brighten up her face already. And that's what we want. 
we want to just give a subtle brightness to her face around her skin area down here as well you know just make it a little nice and bright so let's just dial that back maybe just a little bit more to about maybe 70 73 yeah that's cool so let's look at the before let's go ahead and delete that there and coming back yeah nice and bright that's and that's what we want we just want to even out the lighting um, to complement her face and again increasing the light helps with removing blemishes and wrinkles and things like that so uh, you don't have to go too heavy on using a clarity tool um, we can go further and clean up details by using right here the spot removal tool and you know remove the little blemishes that she has nothing nothing too big so again here is our pretty much our final result let's go ahead and just add a quick vignette or vignetting just kidding all right there we go there we go yeah that looks cool right there and let's go ahead and look at the before and the after massive difference huge difference just by tweaking it up a little bit yes you can do some more we can at this point bring up our blacks a little bit just to create a little more depth actually i did forget one thing folks and let's just go ahead and dive in there and do it um i forgot the eyes uh, this is another thing i'm very very picky about i do want my pictures to come out sharp and the when you're doing portraits one of the most important things is to focus and concentrate on the eyes because uh Blurry eyes will break your shot, I mean, no matter how good it is. You know, you might like a shot, and those eyes are all blurry. It's just, it doesn't, it's not right. So what we're gonna do is just bring up the clarity just a hair. Uh, sharpness is gonna be around 55. Uh, we're going to get in here. This is like really, really close. Um, and we are going to paint in here. Sorry, let me do that again. Increase the flow and the density to 100. And let's go ahead and paint in here. Just let's sharpen up those the edges of the eye, the little hairs. Almost there. Yeah, try and stick in, you know, the details of the eye, not too much outside of it. Um, same thing with the eyebrows. You want to just give a little bit of sharpness to the eyebrows. One more thing. Let's go ahead and create a new brush. Make sure if you guys are going to add a new brush, you always click new or else if you make any changes, you're gonna affect this here, uh, your your current brush. So I click new and I'm going to go ahead and go to Iris Enhance. Bring this down to about 40, 50, 53. That's not too bad right there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and paint inside the iris there. Just enhance the eyes a little bit. Don't go overboard with this. You don't want the eyes to look fake, but just, just brighten it up just a hair. As a matter of fact, I'm probably gonna bring that down just a little bit maybe about 44 yeah that's good all right let's uh, go ahead and back out here it's looking really nice guys let's go look at the a before and the after making those eyes just pop um, one last thing we're gonna add just because I like to make things stand out in these kind of shots is we are going to just make her hair a little bit more contrasty a little more detail in the hair it's a it's just slightly a little flat um, so let's go ahead and we are going to go back to sharpness which we're probably already there and we're going to bump up the clarity to about 43 and the contrast uh, to right about 30 that's that's good enough right there and we are going to just paint there so you can see we're already starting to add more depth to her hair yep and you can paint all around if you like it's up to you um, Adding more detail into here. Even the blurry parts here, it's no big deal. It just makes it pop. And that's what we want. Looking good. It looks real good. I'm pretty happy with it. Let's go ahead and dial back. I think I raised the blacks a little too high. Let's just dial that back a little bit. Yep, it looks great, guys. There you go. That's pretty much it. I wish I could say it was absolutely fast, but like I said, Lightroom tutorials. There's a lot of little things that you have to cover in order to come to a certain look. So if you guys are really keen on wanting to learn these things, 
you'll endure the long videos. I do them all the time. Right? I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Go ahead and leave me your questions and comments below and I'll get back to you. Uh, if you want to share your pictures on Facebook, if you guys practice and use this technique, let me know how it goes. I would love to see how you guys are doing. I'll offer my feedback to you and help you improve your post-production. All right, guys, talk to you later. Don't forget to follow me on all my social outlets and I will see you on the next video. Peace.